Welcome back to Sketching on the Land. I'm Mrs. Smith. Uh, last week we were taking a look at the element of line. This week we will be doing the same but kind of in a different way. So this week is lines all around us. So uh, reviewing what we did last week with the element of line, you all created a lines page. Um, we talked about the types of lines we might see and how lines can be described as horizontal here, perpendicular, meaning at 90 degrees, like the corner of a square. We can have lines that are diagonal. Uh, we can have lines that are vertical, up and down. And also, um, we can also describe the thickness of lines. We also talked about how naming lines helps us to identify them better so that we're, when we're out sketching, we have a name for what we're seeing. Uh, we also looked at um, paying really close attention to lines um, that are not easy to see from far away. Last week, we were focused on zooming in. So this week we're going to be focusing on using line when drawing landscapes. So a lot of times when we are asked to draw a landscape, a picture of a scene, or uh, when we're out in nature, well, draw what you see. That can be really overwhelming because as you can see on this picture photographed by uh, Raymond Cliff, it is a lot of detail. So my tip for you when you're drawing landscapes is to look for big lines. So can you see bodies of water? Can you see trees that are really easy to define? Uh, can you see structures, buildings, homes, bridges? Are there hills? Are there pathways? Is there anything that your eye is immediately looking at um, with lines. So in this one, for example, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of those big lines that we see that's going to give us the basic shape. So for example, I see a line going up here the side of this tree. There's another set of lines there outlining another tree, another set of lines outlining the tree that is closest to me. Then I'm going to look at the body of water here. I'm not adding all the little tiny details of the ripples in the water. All I am doing is looking for that outline along the banks. It also looks like it comes to an end over here, which it doesn't. That's just perspective. That's just a trick. So we're going to follow along the edges to draw our lines. Also, one of the big things in this picture that we can really, our eye is really drawn to is uh, the hills along the edge and also the bridges. So this big long line along the top of the bridge and the bottom line underneath the bridge. We can also add in these little pieces here showing the other parts of the bridge. We want to make sure that we're getting all of those lines that go across here. So if I were to look at this without the picture behind it, this is what it would look like. I get an idea of what is in this without having to do all of the details. I can tell that these are trees here. I have a bridge crossing a body of water and there are some hills on this side. This is a really good first step when we are sketching is if I only focus on the big lines, that gives me a place to start then I can go back in with my different types of lines to add the details that I need. Now that you have those beginning lines, then we go back in and add those details in. This is going to help it make it less overwhelming to try and draw all these little details. So pay attention now to the littler lines that make this more realistic. So kind of going to those medium sized lines. So I like to start with what are my biggest, most bold, prominent in your face lines. And then I'm going to work towards my middle size lines and then my smaller lines. 
So I'm going to pay attention here in this picture when I am adding details. Where are the branches of those trees? Where are the leaves? Are there grass and plants? Well, I can see a whole bunch in between all of these here and creeping over top of the river. Clouds. There's some details way off in the distance. We have these clouds off behind the trees. We want to make sure we get those as well. And then I can look at the water ripples along here. The water ripples are going to give that water a realistic effect too. So in this next video you can see how I take those beginning lines and I add in smaller details to make it look more realistic and more complete. So here we go with uh, my larger version that I'm doing in marker here just to show you how we're going to take those big lines and we're going to start to add those little details. I have sped this up so that uh, you can kind of see the completed process without my whole thinking time, which it does take lots of thinking time when I'm sketching. So the first thing I started with was all, was all the uh, grass and vegetation around the trees there. That was what my eye was drawn to first. And then I started going in and doing branches. Notice how I am tickling the page. Those lines are soft and light. There are lots of little lines instead of big harsh lines. A lot of layering through here. Slightly curved lines, lots of little squiggly lines to show the texture of the bark. More thinking time. I decide to go in and draw that tree that looks very dead off in the distance behind the bridge starting with the biggest lines on there and working to my smaller lines. Made a little mistake, but that's okay because I tickled the page, I can fix it. Starting to add in some of those background cloud details now. I want that beautiful tree off in the distance there as well. adding in just a general shape for the leaves. What I would do is I would go back in and add some kind of squiggly lines or circular lines, um, spiral type lines to make the texture of the leaves. I also wanna make sure I'm getting the grasses and vegetation on the other side of the river, adding some details of the rippled water. And then finally finishing up with the other grasses and plants that I see around. In real time, this took me about five minutes. Your turn. What you can do, here's another picture uh, photographed by Paul Saunier um, that we are using um, for this example. So. If you were on a smart board, you can pause it at any time and you can draw right on top of this, paying really close attention to what are those big lines that you see. Then what you can do is start to identify some of the medium sized lines and some of the smaller lines after that. So if you're on a smart board, you can draw directly on here. You can pause the video, or if you don't have a smart board that you can draw on, well, give it a try in your book as a practice. So your sketching on the land journaling challenge number two is called lines all around us. So we are going to be focused on the points of a compass north, east, south, and west. As we are working on this, we are going to be sketching landscapes in four directions. So our page is going to look something like this. We're gonna have our title lines all around us at the top with the date. Um, and then we're going to use a ruler to draw a line from corner to corner and each side that's making four points. 
and then in the center we can start at the very top north east south and west when you get out onto the land wherever you are sketching um, you can use a compass app on your phone or teachers if you have access to compasses you can help your kiddos find what direction to start in um, and then take a few minutes in each direction doing a sketch of what you see after a few minutes everybody change direction and point to the east or point to the south this gives us a really good idea of what is truly around us what is our environment and we can pay really close attention to where we are at that time and place as you sketch some things you can think about what is in front of you so when you are facing north what is specifically in front of you don't worry about anything else don't worry about to your left and right what is right there in front of you what do you hear where you are looking is there anything in there that's giving you a hint of uh, where sounds are coming from is there anything you need to draw that shows the sounds what is the weather like how does the sun feel i'm not talking about temperature um, how does the wind feel? How does the sun feel? Does it feel like spring yet? Or is it still feeling like wintry weather? Pay attention to the way you feel in that moment as you are sketching. What does the light look like? Is it bright or dull or shadowy? Because how light you draw something is going to make it look more realistic. And the different directions you look in might look different. And remember, a rule with sketching is to tickle the page with your pencil. Soft pencil lines help us fix mistakes instead of having those hard, hard pencil lines that you can't erase. Tickle the page with your pencil, and it also gives your drawing a more natural and realistic look, just like in this picture down here. That's all for today, guys. Have a wonderful time out on the land. I hope this helps, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Bye-bye.